Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. And I, I think in terms of like, you know, justifying the case within organizations um, and 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 developing this side of the business, it's there for the taking. Because if you look at if you look at it from a client's point of view, they, they would love to outsource this problem. They would love to have somebody solve this problem for them effectively. They just need to trust that, that for example, you know, contingent workforce MSPs are the right intermediaries to be able to have the expertise and bring the right tech and, and the right process and solve this for them in the right way and make it manageable without at the moment it being too much of a high risk because you kind of look at it and go, well, why would a company outsource the problem in the first place? It's it's really difficult for them to sort it out internally. You think you think about the um, the lean procurement teams that you're dealing with. They've got existing process, all of the change management involved. If they outsource that, it packages it up much more effectively in a bubble outside the organization. There were some real benefits to doing that. Um, and, and, the, and there are also benefits from a tech adoption point of view as well. When you look at, you know, when you mentioned some clients will say, oh, we've got Ariba, we've got Cooper, we've got SAP file, we've got Oracle, whatever, Workday, this, that and the other that does do might touch on parts of the process. We've got this contract lifecycle management system, we've got this procure to pay, source to pay. That that in itself creates massive hurdles where the internal teams within that, the IT teams are looking at it going, oh, well, can't we do this or shouldn't we do that? Whereas when you outsource it, if the technology meets the requirements of that outsource provision with an intermediary taking in the problem and providing back a solution and interfacing in the right ways, purchase order, finance system, whatever it might be, um, that's much more palatable for the end organization. But again, if you take that hurdle back as well in terms of cost and time and complexity, they can get started and they can realize that and go, that bubble, that solution bubble you have over there is doing a great job. Let's put more through it. We can yep. see the evidence now. Let's build up that business case. And that's when the C-suite start to get involved. And if they're saving enough money, you know what? Even their kind of the golf course relationships with the big consulting firms might seem less important to them when they think, you know, everyone should have a fair a fair go at this in terms of the full supply chain, big suppliers, small suppliers, bring in more diverse suppliers, bring in greater diversity of suppliers. Um, all those things can be considered when there's the visibility and the and the proof in um in the in the, that value can be delivered. Um so I, I do think, yeah, that's that's where I see but the reason. I think you bring up a, a good point there. We talked about this a little bit when there's that resistance to change. We already have these systems, but that that tech stack, hey, we're going from these five somewhat integrated swivel chair systems down to one, maybe maybe two, depending on where, where it is and its, its maturity life cycle. I think that, that goes a long way because to me, uh, it's all about the client end user experience. How quickly can I engage Johnny and Mickey to come in and just rock this project for me, right? How easy, how many clicks do I need to do? What sort of hurdles do I need to go through? Wow, it's only in one system and it's all integrated. That's pretty nice. I don't have to wait for it to kick from this over to contracting, over to legal to re review, over to this other provisioning system. You know, all of that can, that user experience, I think can can deter, you know, the the, the lay stakeholder, you know, the, the engagement manager that, that's trying to do this. And when you get enough of that negative feedback um, on, on a process, you know, it can, I think it can create another hurdle or resistance of change, um, you know, but it can also be the enabler of well, as well, when the manager says, wow, going through five systems sucks. And the manager that went through the pilot of the new statement of work system, well, yeah, we did it in, you know, one, maybe two systems. I think that's always a compelling case and compelling story that can go a long way. And like you said, when the, the C-suite gets a hold of that and they're the, the end users are happy, then there was some cost savings involved and legal's happy because we have compliance and visibility. You start getting these champions on board. And then, like you said, suddenly those bigger projects, yeah, it's more to tackle, but there's some energy behind it because that ROI has been seen. So I think that's, I think you did a, a real nice job of, of, of summarizing that in, in a way of that, you know, just taking it to the next level and, and getting that snowball effect of momentum and, and I guess ROI, you know, uh, eventually bubbling up.